In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about the hematocrit, a very simple red blood cell parameter. Let's just put that uh, down here. Red blood cell parameter, um, whereby we can determine if a patient has either too few or too many red blood cells. So too few would be anemia. So the hematocrit is a simple screening test for anemia or too many which will be polycythemia. Now, to determine whether there are too few or too many red blood cells in a patient body, patient's body, we will first take a sample of blood, and you can see here I've used a purple-topped EDTA tube, which contains the total blood volume, but remember that the total blood volume, we can write, let's just put total blood volume at the bottom, the total blood volume is made up of different components, one being the red blood cell volume. Then we have the volume of white blood cells, which is a small volume, platelets, also in normal circumstances, a relatively small volume. And then the plasma volume, which is actually, under usual circumstances, the greatest part of the volume um, of blood that makes up the total blood volume. Now when we determine the hematocrit, what we are trying to do is to determine what fraction of the total blood volume here is made up of red blood cells. Now the total volume of red blood cells in the total blood volume of the whole body should be more or less the same as the amount of red blood cells per volume of blood in the sample. Now in real life this is not 100% true but at least it gives us a good approximation. So let's see how we can determine what percentage or what fraction of this blood volume is made up of red blood cells. Now most laboratories use automated methods to determine the hematocrit these days. There are manual methods which I explain in the video on the packed cell volume which you can go and have a look, look at. But in the most, most of the machines that use automated methods do it in the following way. First you take a sample of blood and this sample of blood when you put it in the machine the machine will measure what the total volume is of that sample that you put into the machine. And now what you would like to do is to determine what volume of this total is made up of red blood cells. So let's just call that the red blood cell volume. Now to determine this, the machine already measured the total blood volume, which was quite simple. But to determine the red blood cell volume is also not that difficult because we know that these machines can measure the number, let's just put that symbol there as number, the number of red blood cells. And secondly, they can also determine the volume of individual red blood cells. So we call that the mean cell volume. Now, if you know what the number of red blood cells um, is, and you know what the mean cell volume of an average red blood cell is, then it becomes a very easy calculation where you just multiply the two to get the red blood cell volume and this will give you a fraction that we call the hematocrit. Now the hematocrit just like the hemoglobin will differ from men to women and the normal hematocrit in males would usually be somewhere between 0 0.38 to 0 0.46 or if you want to put this into a percentage, you can just, just say between 38 and 46 percent because it's a fraction of the total. So for every liter of blood, in other words, there will be 30, 380 to 460 moles of red blood cells. Same with females. The values, as I said, will be slightly lower. In females, this will be somewhere between 0.35 to let's say about 0.44 or 35 to 44%. So what do we do with these values? Well, 
These values can give us an indication, as I said in the beginning, of whether they would be anemia or polycythemia. If the hematocrit, in other words, is decreased, then we say the patient has anemia. If the hematocrit is significantly increased, we say that the patient has polycythemia, literally to literally many cells in the blood, but in this case and in, in hematological terminology, polycythemia refers to red blood cells. There is an important thing to remember though, and I'm going to put a but here. You must think of one other component of the total blood volume that can uh, affect your calculation, and that is the plasma. So think about the plasma. Why do I say that? The greatest part of the total blood volume is made up of plasma. So in a patient who is dehydrated, for instance, the plasma volume will decrease. And if that happens, the total blood volume will also decrease. So if we go back to our calculation of the hematocrit, we can see here that if our total blood volume decreases, but our red blood cell volume at the top remains the same or unchanged, this will lead to an increase in the hematocrit. So patients who are dehydrated or in shock may often have an increase in their hematocrit. A value that is worth remembering is a hematocrit above 60%. So let's just say we put a hematocrit here and it is above 0 0.60, which is the same as 60%, that usually means that the patient has polycythemia. And if this is the case, you have to investigate it and look for a cause. An interesting practical thing is just that, um, if you want to remember this, is that the hematocrit uh, usually is about equal to three times the hemoglobin value, three times the hemoglobin. Of course, we will take the units away here. So if we take, for example, a patient with a hemoglobin of 15, then we would expect the hematocrit to be about 45. So it's just a nice practical tip that you can use. Um, if you just have a hematocrit value available, this can give you an indication of what the hemoglobin is. So that's it. In simple terms, the hematocrit is a simple screening test to look for anemia or polycythemia. Just remember that the plasma volume may have an influence and you have to take that into account.